and welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My name is Emma and I have literally melted into one big puddle. In this fucking heat, there is nothing to do but sit inside and drink, so that's what I'm doing. And that's why you're getting two videos in one day. Happy bloody Friday. Today I'm going to be reacting to my July TBR, so I've come prepared with beer which I have to drink as punishment for any of the books I didn't manage to read. That's basically all you need to know about how this works, so let's do it. Pour out the shots, I'm coming in to tell you what you're supposed to have read this month. And let's start with the failures that you were supposed to have read last month. The Talented Mr. Ripley. Yes, I did read The Talented Mr. Ripley and so did RG, we both buddy read it together and really really liked it. I love that film and it was really cool getting to see the book behind it. The character of Tom Ripley is actually quite different in the book from the film. He's a more complicated character, of course, which always happens in the book, but yeah, it was really great to read that. The History of Love. Yes, I read that one, that was really lovely. A really gentle and sad and beautiful book. Really, really liked the way it was written. I've never read anything by Nicole Krauss before, but I will be looking her up now. And The Time Traveler's Wife. Okay, I'm still reading that one. So technically that means I don't have to drink because I'm still reading it, I think. And for these two at least, I'm saying if you haven't read them by now, I think you have to do double drinks because these have been on here for several months running. Yeah, they, it has been on there for a while. So I think I have to at least have one drink because I haven't managed to finish it. But I don't have to double because I did start it at least. Next up, the two books that you use to cheat balancing the books. Shocking behaviour. The Humans and the Light Between Oceans. You have to have read or DNF these books this month. If you haven't, down your drink. Am I going to regret that? Who cares? <laughs> Luckily, I have. I read The Light Between Oceans and I really loved it. It was so close. I so nearly gave that one away without having started it. I'm so glad I kept it because I really, really enjoyed it. I already knew what the premise was and I thought, really interesting premise, but is it going to actually work? And that show that was really, really well done. And I started The Humans on most people's recommendations that they preferred The Humans and it was fine, but I felt the same way I felt about it, about um, How to Stop Time, the other Matt Haig that I've read, in that they both had really interesting premises and the writing was fine, but after I got a certain amount of the way through I was like, okay I get the premise, I get what you're trying to do with it here. It was lacking that kind of something surprising. With The Humans I felt like I got what he was trying to do, he was trying to make a point about humanity and show us the wonderfulness of being human and then it just wasn't adding anything more. So I'm sorry that if it did add something in the end of the book, but halfway through I just wasn't really compelled to keep reading. I've only got one arc for you this month because I've really cracked down on accepting things from publishers because it's just getting out of hand. That's Vox by Christina Dulcher. I'm hoping that I've read this one by now because it looks really good and I really want to know Future Me's thoughts on it. Well, Future Me's thoughts on it. Um, I was loving it for the first like two thirds. Oh, that was so so good. I was like, this is the 2018 version of The Handmaid's Tale. It's fantastic. I kept reading bits aloud to my husband. I kept debating things like, what do you do when your sons are raised in this regime that teaches them to think a certain way about you as their mother? Like, so many really good questions. I was loving it. And then it just kind of fell apart. The last third just didn't really work for me at all. It tried to get too kind of scientific with what the main characters were doing, which meant that it was harder for me to follow and not as interesting for me to follow. And it just got a bit silly and over the top, I thought, which was a real, real shame because I thought the premise was so, so good. The premise basically is that women are only allowed to speak 100 words every day. So it was a really cool and scary premise, but yeah, it was meh. And finally, the book club will be coming after you with pitchforks if you haven't read Headscarves and Hymens. So have you? I did read that one. I read that one on holiday and it was really good. Really, really powerful stuff. Really thought provoking. It actually changed my mind on certain things. Not even changed my mind, but made me question myself on certain beliefs I'd had. So like, for example, one of the big chapters was about headscarves and the wearing of headscarves. And I didn't think that I would learn anything new from that because this book was written a while ago and there's obviously been a lot of debate about headscarves. So I kind of thought I'd heard all of the arguments on that. But actually while reading it, I was like, wow, there's loads of things I hadn't quite thought of. And we had a really interesting debate at my book club. The main quote that really, really stuck with me was when she was talking about how she, as a woman who grew up Muslim um, and grew up in Egypt, when she speaks to American audiences about Islam in general and about the headscarf, she says it's like this minefield with, on the right, you have the extreme right-wing people who are just like ready to lap up anything negative that's said about Islam, which they can use as fuel and like justification for their hatred. But then on the left, you have the liberals who can be equally unhelpful in their sort of insistence to respect other cultures. When you do that, 
who within those cultures are you helping? You're actually only helping, you're only defending the most conservative people within those cultures at the expense of the oppressed people within those cultures. Interesting book, you should read it. And to finish things off, we have my two Get A Hold Of Your Shelf challenges, which help me to read my existing TBR shelf. First up, I'm gonna pick a category from this mug. This month, I need to read the book with the prettiest cover. I actually already know what this is. So do I. This book, The House of Birds, is absolutely beautiful. Look at this cover. It's rather a long one, soz, but that is getting added to the TBR. Yeah, so I did not read that. Didn't even start it, didn't even look at it or pick it up. Which is a shame because I really want to read it. I've wanted to do pages. It looks lovely, so that'll be going on to next month's TBR. But for now, that's a fail. And finally, I'm gonna roll this dice to see what's the last book to get added to my TBR. I dropped it. I got a six. I haven't rolled that one before. <gasps> that's such good news. I forgot I even made that roll for myself. If I roll a six on the dice, that means that this month I get a break and I don't have to add anything else to my TBR. So that means that my TBR for July is just eight books long, which is a lot better than it was last month. So how'd you do, Emma? Are you drunk yet? Not really drunk at all. That was fine. So the only ones I have to carry forward to next month are House of Birds and then finishing off The Time Traveler's Wife. So yeah, I continue to be hot and sweaty, but not particularly drunk. Maybe I should fix that because it might make me feel less hot and miserable. See you next time.